What Will the Weather Be? by Linda DeWitt and illustrated by Carol Kroll. The sky was grey and cloudy over Washington, D.C. on the morning of March the 9th, 1999. The weather forecast called for an inch or two of snow. Uh-oh. But by noon, there was so much snow on the ground that many cars and buses were stuck in it. The airports had to close. So did the schools. In all, eight inches of snow fell on the city. The weather forecast was wrong, and people were not prepared for the huge storm. That doesn't look like a snowy day. Weather forecasts tell us what kind of weather is coming, but pre predicting the weather is hard to do. It is easy to see what the weather is like right now. You can go outside and look. Is the air warm or cold? Is it windy or still? Is the sky clear or is it covered with dark clouds? Whatever the weather is like, it often stays that way for a day at a time. But then something happens. The wind begins to blow. Air from somewhere else moves in. It says new air is blowing in. And that is called a front. It blows the old air out. Sometimes it's cooler air from the north. Sometimes it's warmer air from the south. The new air pushes against the old air. The place where this happens is called a front. Most changes in the weather occur along fronts. Where cold air pushes against warm air, we say there is a cold front. Cold fronts move fast. They can make the wind howl. They quickly push warm air up and out of the way. The rising air carries water, and the water is not a liquid. It is a gas called water vapor. As the air rises, it cools. The air vapor turns to liquid. And then high in the sky, the drops of liquid water clump together and make clouds. Here it is, that cold air pushing, pushing, pushing. Here's the cold front. It pushes the warm air up. Warm air carrying water vapor, making the clouds. The clouds grow big and dark as more air rises and then it rains. There may be thunder and lightning. If it's cold enough, snow falls. It all happens very fast. Cold fronts cause sudden storms, but they usually do not last long. After a cold front passes, the sky clears and the weather is cooler. Now this is a little bit different. Where warm air pushes against cold air, a warm front forms. Warm fronts move slowly. They make the wind blow just a little. Wispy clouds and cover the sky. So here's the warm air, the warm front. Cold air moves up, but very slowly. There may be a light shower for so just a little bit of rain, or it may drizzle for a couple of days. Warm fronts change the weather slowly. After a warm front passes, the sky clears and the weather is warmer. Meteorologists are people who study the weather. They try to predict where weather will form. I see a warm front here and a cold front. They measure the temperature of the air at different places around the earth. They find out where the warm air is and where the cold air is. And here is one of the tools they use. A thermometer measures the temperature. See, the, whoop, it's way up high. It's hot, hot, hot. And here, whoop, down, it's cold, cold, cold. Not much heat. They watch to see where the air moves. They measure how fast it goes. And these are the tools they use. 
a wind vane. A wind vane tells from what direction the wind blows. See, north, south, east or west. This is an anemometer. And an anemometer measures the wind speed. So those little cups, the faster the wind's blowing, the faster that moves around. Anemometer, I think that's called. Water vapor, that's what we talked about earlier. Where the water drops, rising up to make the clouds. Meteorologists also measure the amount of water vapor or humidity in the air. Water vapor is what makes air feel damp or humid. Lots of water vapor rises from the ocean. That is why air along coastlines feels humid. When you're at the beach, it kind of feels kind of wet all the time. And that's called a hygrometer. It measures the humidity, how much water is in the air. Another thing meteorologists measure is air pressure. It's hard to imagine, but air has weight, and all of this weight presses on the earth. It presses on everything, even you. Hundreds of pounds of air press against your body all the time. You can't feel it because air, the air inside your body pushes out at the same force. So here's inside your body's pushing, pressure's pushing out, and outside it's pushing. Oopsie. Air inside this basketball pushes out too. You can bounce a ball when it has air in it, but what happens when you take the air out? The basketball flattens. It collapses from the weight of the outside air. You cannot feel air pressure and you cannot tell when it changes, but it does, and sometimes it is high and sometimes it's low. As the air pressure changes, the weather changes too, and a barometer is the tool that measures that pressure. So here's that basketball. It can stay solid and it can bounce because the air is inside it. But if you take the air out, then no bounce. This is the air moving up. Remember, we talked about the water vapor making the clouds. When air pressure is low, air is rising into the sky. Water vapor in the air turns to liquid and clouds form. As more air rises, the pressure gets lower and lower, and the clouds get bigger and darker. Lots of rain and snow may fall when the air pressure is low. Luckily, the air pressure is high most of the time. When air pressure is high, air is sinking towards the earth. The skies stay mostly clear. A few puffy clouds may appear, but it, it won't rain. The weather is dry and sunny when the air pressure is high. And that's what we like. Meteor meteorologists measure the air pressure over the whole earth. They find the highs and the lows. They measure the temperature and the humidity of the air. They see where air is warm or cold, damp or dry. They measure the speed and direction of the wind. They take their measurements over the oceans and over the land. There's a boat. Look at there's his wind sock, so he can see. And oop, there's that little cup tool that's seeing how fast the wind's moving. Looks like she's going to send something in up into the sky. This is a weather buoy. That's like floating a buoy, is something that floats in the water. They have weather aeroplanes. Sometimes they fly into hurricanes to see how fast the wind is moving. This place is called a weather station, and it's filled with tools to help them predict the weather. That's a weather balloon. Oops, looks like this is what this lady was sending up over there. And even in space, we have weather satellites that kind of tell us what the weather's going to be like. So lots of tools. Throughout the day, the measurements are sent to a National Weather Service in Maryland. There, huge computers plot the measurements on maps. The maps show the temperature, humidity, and pressure of the air all around the world. Arrows on the maps mark the direction of the winds, cold fronts, and warm fronts, and show where the storms are forming. Meteorologists everywhere study the maps to forecast the weather for tomorrow and the next day. They need to know what is happening hundreds and hundreds of miles away. 
they need to know what kind of air is coming and then they can make a forecast. So that's why they have to do that, so that they can see what air is coming to tell you what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. Here's a weather map. Here's a high. That's the wind direction the arrows are showing you. Here's a low. Here's a cold front. Here's a warm front. There's another high pressure spot out there. You look at all of those and then they can tell us what the weather's going to be. Weather forecasts are sent to radio and television stations. They are printed in newspapers. The forecast tells us what kind of air is coming and what kind of weather to expect. Except on, in, on that weather forecast at the beginning of the story, they got it a little bit wrong. They may call for warm and sunny days. Or they may tell us to prepare for snow and strong winds. They may warn farmers when a frost is coming. That way they can cover the fruit so that it doesn't get damaged. They help us decide whether our schools and airports should be closed. Remember before we had to close our school because they said a hurricane was coming and we wanted to use the school as a place to keep people safe. Changes in the weather are not always predictable. So not all of the forecasts are right. Sometimes the meteorologists can tell us to take our umbrellas when we don't even need them. Other times they say we won't need a jacket when we do. But the meteorologists today know more about the weather than ever before because they have such great tools and computers. And usually they can depend, we can depend on the forecast when we are wondering, hmm, what will the weather be? And that's a little bit about the authors. So the weather forecast can help us, but it's not always exactly right. 